think you guys are able to see my screen right yeah yeah the other guys on the call can you please confirm anyone like are you able to see my screen yeah yes okay thank you yes so today i'm going to provide uh, you know uh, some of the uh, topics uh, in this particular demo so which covers like uh, manual testing and also some part of uh, uh, core java as well okay just a kind of demo so i'll be giving you some brief notes about uh, some of the topics which i have picked for this demo so let's start with this so uh, the contents here so which i was going to provide in this demo is like uh, the first one which comes under manual testing so which is stlc process and then we are going to uh, deal with uh, understanding the like printing hello java uh, program or you can say hello world program as well and the uh, first topic so which we are going to discuss as part of core java so that also i was trying to cover in this particular demo so which is, which is like uh, data types and variables in java okay so the first topics so which comes under is like uh, stlc process so stlc will stands for uh, software testing life cycle okay so we have sdlc also so we are going to discuss in detail so when it comes to uh, the training sessions actually so uh, for this session i have picked stlc process alone okay so it will have like uh, sequence of specific activities so which we are going to perform as a testing team so why we are going to perform all these activities is like to ensure the quality of the software or the product that we are going to deliver we are going to deliver ultimately a product right so we are going to go with each one of these phases in detail so which will comes first as requirement analysis it will starts with requirement analysis and then it will move to test planning test design environment setup test execution and test closure okay so these are the different types of phases that will be involved in stlc process so we are going to discuss each one of these in detail okay so the first one comes in is like uh, requirement analysis so this is the first step of software testing life cycle process and in this phase as a testing team we are going to understand the requirements like what is to be tested and for example if anything is like, like uh, missed or you know has to be updated as part of requirements so we are going to uh, uh, either pos or bas saying that so this particular requirement is missing uh, let me take some examples for you so when it comes to real time example for example like uh, let's say we are building a house so we have provided some uh, we have given some work to the contractors saying that you have to build this house for us okay so these contractors will get some workers so they are going to give some work with respect to the workers and these workers will be distributed the work to build a house that the four workers i was taking some example so they are going to distribute this work accordingly 1 so here this is like building a house so these contractors are nothing but like either pos or bas these people will act as say that pos or bas and then the work workers will act as either development team or the testing team so whenever we have given some house to build like uh, for the contractors they are going to provide the same sort of work to the workers okay so first what they are also will be doing is so they need some raw materials to build a house 
like for example what are all the raw materials that are needed for building a house can you give me some examples which are necessary for building a house yeah cement bricks maybe concrete and then iron steel something like this okay so whenever they are started like building a house first what they'll do is this contractors will be referring to this requirements which are nothing but raw materials so they'll be going through all these requirements if let's say something is missing from here let's say steel is missing from this requirement we doesn't have steel in our requirements that means then contractors will come back to the builders like let's say i'm the owner so they'll come back to us asking that this particular requirement is missing okay so steel is missing to build our house okay that means so we they are going to analyze the requirements as part of building a house when something is missing in this particular requirement they are going to come back to the contractors that means pos or bs so pos or bs are nothing but po is nothing but product owner and ba will stand for business analyst then these people come back to owner saying that this particular requirement is missing okay in our real time projects also what they'll be doing is first they are going to analyze the requirements if something is missing as part of this requirement they are going to come back to the either pos or ba saying that this particular requirement is missing in the requirement document for example they have updated each and everything now requirements are present clearly okay then they are going to document in as part of srsd so they are going to make a document as part of the requirements so they are going to document it as part of so this document is known as srsd or srd so it will have all the requirements for example if we want to build a gmail application let's say the requirement is like first you have to build sign up page and then sign in and then after sign up and sign in so they are asking us to build a home page which will have inbox and then we have to have compose email functionality and then we should have some of the other tabs like send items and then start items and then outbox and then delete like trash something like that so all these requirements will be documented in this srsd srsd stands for software requirement specification document when someone refers this srsd they can easily understand okay these are all the requirements that we have to build for this gmail application that is why each and every requirement they will be documenting in this particular srsd document or srd document okay so srsd stands for software requirement specification document okay any questions till now in this first phase you can stop me anytime guys if you are not understanding okay yeah so the next phase which comes in is like test planning phase so this is the second phase of stlc process so here what they are going to do is in this uh, test planning phase so they are going to test like so what is the amount of work that it has to be carried out what is the estimated efforts that we have to put forth and what is the cost of testing work 
how many testers are needed how many developers are needed to build a application they are going to calculate all these things in in this test planning phase so for example if you want to build this gmail application let's say we need three developers so they are going to document it in the test plan document so this test plan document will be created by testing team lead he is going to prepare this test plan document which will have all this information who is going to work on this particular application for example to build this application we need three double developers and for testing this application we need let's say four testers and how much amount of cost that we have to provide for this testers or for this developers so that also been documented inside this test plan document so who is who is going to cre create this test plan document the testing team manager okay or the lead so this test plan document will be created by testing team manager or the test team lead so he is going to capture all the work that has to be carried out for building and testing this particular application okay so then then comes in is like test case development so that means we have to create the test cases or test scenarios based on the requirements for example let's say we have we have started working on the application which is gmail application and this gmail application the first module they are going to develop is like sign up module or sign in module so this is one module first which they are going to develop as part of this gmail application so which will have the username and the password with some sign in button okay so here we have to provide user name then password and we have a button like sign so if this requirement is present so what we are going to do as part of test case development is so we are going to start prepare the preparing the test cases based on this requirement for example so what are the test cases that you can write for this for testing this particular module can someone tell me so what are the different types of test cases that you can write positive test cases you can start with positive test cases what will be the most positive test case to test this particular module anyone on the call so what would be the basic very basic test case that we can write for testing this particular module for example if we are providing valid username and password and whenever we are clicking on sign in button it has to it has to take me to either home page or inbox page something like that right so that will be the first happy flow path or you can take it as positive flow path so we have to verify the login functionality by providing valid credentials i can write a test case like this right for testing this uh, you know module so what will be the negative test case for this for this module so what will be the negative test case that i can write just a basic negative test case that you can tell for example if i am providing invalid username and invalid password when i am clicking on sign in it has to show me some error messages it should not give me the home page instead it has to throw me some error messages saying that it is an invalid password or invalid username that you have entered okay so that will comes under negative test case so likewise we are going to create some positive test cases and also the negative test cases as well to test this particular module not only this module so if they are going to develop all these modules so we are going to prepare the test cases with respect to sign up sign in home page inbox compose email everything under this 
test case development phase. So we are going to create the test cases. It has to include both positive and also negative test cases. Okay. So why I was stressing it has to include negative test cases also. For example, if you are just testing the positive flow, if it is breaking. So let's say if I am providing the or user is providing the invalid password or invalid username, he has to see the error messages properly. If it isn't developed, then no one is going to use it. Okay. So that is why we have to cover both the positive and negative flows. Okay. Any questions? And then comes in is test environment setup phase. So this is the fourth phase in STLC process. Basically, what we are going to do in this test environment setup phase is, so for example, so we have two types of testing people, right? Like manual testers and automation testers. Let's say when it comes to test environment setup, what we are going to do in this particular phase is. We are going to define where we are going to perform the test execution. Okay. When it comes to real time, where we are going to build the house in some particular place, right? So here, for example, the requirement is we have to test the Gmail application in Chrome browser. So this is the requirement. If there are two types of testers who, who is going to perform the testing for this Gmail application, for example, for manual testers and automation testers. So when it comes to manual testers, the test environment setup is Chrome browser. He has to install this Chrome browser only because he has to perform the test execution inside this Chrome browser only, right? So this will be his test environment setup. So he has to install the Chrome browser in his PC. Where we are going to perform the test execution, that will be test environment setup. So for automation testers, they need some Eclipse ID is for writing the test cases. Okay. So they are not going to test it manually. So they need Eclipse IDE to write some code using either Java or Python, something like that. Okay. For Python, so we have uh, PyCharm, something that has to be installed. And they need some of the other things like they have to install Chrome driver .exe. .exe file, they need Okay. So for example, if they are, they need some Excel jar files or different sort of jar files and Selenium, for example, Selenium jar files. So without this, they, they are not going to, they are not able to test it, right? So that's why this comes under test environment setup for automation testers. And Chrome browser comes under test environment setup for manual testers, where we are going to perform the testing, which comes under test environment setup. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Then, so setup is done. We have created the test cases also. Now we are going to execute the test cases. When we are going to start executing our test cases? Before the development or after the development? Before development, we can't do right. So if the system is not exist, then we can't perform our testing. Okay. It has to be done after the development. Runs. Who is going to notify you the development has been done? No, exactly. So developers are going to tell you saying that this particular module has been developed because they are going to develop the application, right? We as a tester has to perform the testing. Okay. So let's say you, so we have four people. Let's say totally we have four people in our team. So where we have two testers and two developers.
these guys are going to take care of developing the application so we as a testers are going to take care of testing okay let's say developers has been notified saying that sign in module has been developed okay then we are going to start picking this module for testing okay once it is developed only we can start picking for testing if it is not developed we can't test it right so there is no uh, phase of testing okay so if it is in development okay so developers has to notify for testers saying that this particular module has been developed so you can start your test then only we as a testers going to perform the test execution based on what we are going to perform the test execution based on the test cases that we have created written so where we have created the test cases inside this test case development phase okay so here we have created the test cases and here the test environment setup is also there that means where we are going to perform the testing and once developers are notifying us so this particular module has been developed so we are going to start our test case execution based on the test cases that we have written okay for example when you have started validating this application or testing this particular module or something if you are seeing some sort of defects then you are going to raise it as a bug so for example what i was trying to explain is you have entered valid username you have entered valid username but you have entered invalid password whenever you are clicking on sign in button it was showing 500 internal server error is this the right behavior so what it has to show us okay yeah so it has to show us saying that incorrect password has been entered okay so this is a defect which is deviating from the expected output it was deviating from the expected output instead of showing some error message it was showing 500 internal server error so we are going to raise it as a bug okay and we are going to assign it to developers only because they are developed they have developed this application right so whenever we are trying to raise some defects we are going to assign them only okay they are going to take care of this defect and they are going to fix it and they will be assigning back to the testers so once they are assigning back to the testers again we are going to test this particular functionality by providing valid password and invalid sorry valid username and invalid password okay and once we are clicking on sign in it has to show me the error message saying that we, you have entered invalid password okay so all these activities will be carried out in test execution phase okay and then last phase which comes under is test closure phase in this phase so this is the last phase of stlc process so once the testing has been completed all the reports and results are documented so we are going to take some screenshots or or the video recordings in this particular test execution phase why we are going to take some screenshots is for example let's say you have tested an application or module okay as i said for example if you are testing with this valid password and valid username so if you are taking the screenshot if in case in future when this code is deployed to production or live for the users so if they are telling so if i am entering valid password and valid username also when i am clicking on sign in it, it was showing some errors saying that 500 internal server error how you have tested like that they, they people will ask us so for that reference so what we are going to do is we are going to take some screenshot or some video recordings okay so kind of proofs that we are going to take so that will be carried out in test closure phase of stlc process okay so this is how we are going to perform the different phases of stlc and in each phase so we have different sort of things that has to be performed any questions in this stlc process so if you doesn't have anything so i'll switch to the next topic which is executing a hello world program in go java 
who has seen this basic program to print hello world anyone on the call as well who knows this program very well just printing a basic hello world in the output who can explain me clearly so what is what so i need a sort of explanation so what is public what is a class what is hello and what is static void what is void means and what is main so all these things who can explain this okay let me start don't get for you just give me a second so this is very basic program in go java so which will print welcome to abs or technologies okay so whatever string you are giving here it will print as it is okay so here in this program so i try to explain what is what so what is public here if you have known anyone so public in java is a access modifier okay so public is known as an access modifier in java so we have four types of access modifiers there are four access modifiers in java like public one we can take and then we have private and then default and lastly we have protected so i am going to teach you these in detail when we switch to the training sessions but for now public is one of the access modifiers in java okay and class so when when it comes to the class class is a keyword it is a keyword which tells that you are creating a new class so this class will tell you you are creating a new class with this name the name of the class is hello so here hello stands for name of the class so here this is a keyword which tells you a new class has been created with this keyword you can tell that a new class is being created with this hello so this is the name of the class so it is a name of the class in java the classes should start with an upper case letter so whenever you are creating a class it has to start with the first letter as upper case letter for example let's say don't think of these things for now so what i was trying to do is i am going to create a class so i have clicked on 
package. So I'll tell you how to create this project, how to create this package, how to create the class. And for now, just see this like, so I'm going to create a new class. Okay. So when I'm clicking on new and class, so it will create a new class. Inside this class, you can start writing your programs. So when I'm clicking on this class, it will show me, you have to provide the name of the class. Okay. For example, I'm creating name of the class as some dummy. So dummy is the name of the class. So it was already exists. So it was showing this one. So sample is the name of the class I have given. So the first letter has to be capital letter, as I said. If I am giving small letter, what it happens is, see here. So if I am giving smaller case letter, I mean first letter as smaller case, then it will show you a warning sign saying that you are creating the name which is discouraged. So Java type name usually starts with an uppercase letter. So when you are going to create a class, so you have to give the first letter as capital letter. So if you need this public static void main, so without this main method, you can't execute your Java code. So that is why this is very necessary. Okay. So if you are clicking on finish, it will generate you the public static void main. Okay. So here you can start writing your code. So here, this keyword will stands for like saying that you are creating a new class. What is the class name that you have given? Sample here, you can see the class name. Okay. So you are creating a new class and it will shows that. So with this keyword, it will tells you a new class is being created with this name and here public is what access modifier. Okay. So one is one of the access modifiers in Java. So class is a keyword, which will tells you a new class is being created. So this is the name of the class. Again, what is public same access modifier. Again, public is access modifier. So the static here is again, one of the keyword in Java. Static is a keyword in Java, which is used for memory management purpose. So whenever you are using static keyword, you can efficiently manage your memory. Okay, so this is the keyword available in Java. So when it comes to void, so void will stands for return type. And it doesn't return anything. you are creating a method the mandatory things are access modifier is mandatory and this return type is mandatory and the method name is mandatory okay so here void will stands for return type in java and it doesn't return you anything void is a return type and it will not return anything so main is the method name so if you are providing any name before this braces so you have this brackets right so this one and this one so this tells you you are creating a method. So this braces will tells you you are creating a method. Which one is like? So this particular brace and this one. This tells you you are creating a method. Okay. So here also it looks like method braces only, right? So that means print is a method. So here print is a method. So here main is the method. So main is the method name here. Print is the method name. LN will stands for new line. So I'll tell you how it executes. If you are providing LN, if you are not providing LN, how it works. Okay. I'll show you. So string in Java is a class. So here string in Java is a class. Okay. And string Whenever you are providing a string value, you have to give it in double quotations. Double quotes. For example,
here you can provide a string value so whenever you are providing a string value it has to be inside this double quotations okay so that means you are giving a string value okay so if you are giving single quotations like this that means you are giving a character value single quotations will stand for giving a character value double quotations will stand for giving a string value this you can get okay so here welcome i'm giving welcome it will print as it is in the console output so here string in java is a class so this will stand for array symbol in java so this will shows that array symbol in java whenever you are trying to create an array you have to use this symbol so args will stands for command line arguments okay you can provide n number of command line arguments and then what else so system is a class in java how i was telling system is a class in java so there is a clue that you can say the first letter is starting with capital letter so as i said whenever you are trying to create a class if the first letter is capital letter then it tells you it is a class so here also in system the first letter is showing as capital letter that means it is a class class in java will refers you in green color and it will shows the c symbol so this is the c symbol okay so interfaces will have blue color symbol and it will have the letter as i okay we can create interfaces and classes inside this package so i'll tell you what is this package how to create this package how to create this project and all for now classes will be represented in c symbol and it will have green color okay whereas interfaces will refer you in blue color and it will have i letter okay so out is used for printing the output okay so for printing the output we have to print this welcome so then you have to use this out out uh, statement so print is a method why i was telling print is a method so this braces and this braces whenever you are using this that means you are creating a method so here this is a method print ln will stands for new line next line okay for example and one more thing just wanted to mention so this is the starting braces okay of the class and this is the ending braces whenever you are pointing your cursor it is shows the rectangle symbol here this is the closing one for this to see this one so where it is closing you can point the cursor here and it will shows the closing thing here so this is the entry point of this method and this is the exit point and here also if you are placing the cursor here see it was showing for the entry point it was showing rectangle symbol okay so this is the entry point for this closing braces okay like this way you can tell it was starting here for this method and it was closing here for this class it was starting here and it is ending here okay so now if i am running this program what it will happen is it will print whatever you are providing in this string so if i am providing welcome it will print welcome only so see here it was printing welcome so when you are using one more statement which is system dot out dot print ln abs sir i have given some space here and i was printing abs sir so what it will do is if you are providing ln then what it will do is it will print this welcome and the cursor will be moved to next line if you are not providing ln what it will do is it will print this welcome and the cursor will be still there in the same line so that's why to differentiate between two lines we are going to give this ln so ln will move your cursor to the next line so see here if i am running this program these two will printed in new lines so first it will print this and it will move the cursor to the next line if you are using ln so if i am deleting this ln now what it will do is it will print this welcome and the cursor will be in the same line only so here itself it will print space absr next it will go to next line next time it will go to next line so if you see here the output will be printed in the same line itself if i am removing ln see it was printing in the same line if i am using ln it will print me in the different lines so ln will move your cursor to the next line okay so that is the difference but the method name is print so how i was telling print is a method because i was using this braces 
for any methods in java you are going to use this braces okay you can blindly tell that if you are giving this braces that means you are creating a method the method name will be here only so what is the method name for this one for this method method name is main so for this method name is print okay did you understood the basic program of printing hello world or welcome to abs or something like this so see how many concepts we have in this very basic program so whenever you are trying to write a code you have to understand each and every keyword that you are trying to write you should not write it blindly so you have to learn why i was using public what is the necessity of public what is the necessity of class keyword so what is this hello means okay so all these things you have to learn you should not write a program blindly okay you have to understand all these concepts whenever you are started writing a program you have to understand each and every keyword why you are writing so what is the usage of that keyword okay clear any questions shall i move ahead okay then comes under the last topic in our demo so which is data types and variables in java so this is the first topic that we are going to discuss as part of our training sessions but i'll do a brief notes on this so what is data types and what are variables how to create a variable how to declare a variable and how to initialize it okay when it comes to data types we have two data types in java i'll tell this briefly but when it comes to you know our sessions i'll make it very clear so data types in java we have two types so one is primitive and the other one is non primitive primitive data type and the other one is non primitive data type under primitive data types we have different sort of things like integer so int float yeah very good character and then double so we have different sort of things boolean okay so all these things comes under primitive data types it has some sizes okay so when it comes to primitive data types it will have some sizes and it will it will store some values among these things to this things like that okay so for now primitive data types are these things which includes boolean character byte short all these things okay so boolean will store either true or false character will store single character of any of the alphabets so for example a is an alphabet if you are using character you can store one alphabet okay so if you are using boolean as data type you can store either true or false okay and non primitive data types we have classes interfaces strings and arrays okay so all these comes under non primitive data types so i am going to discuss these things in detail when it comes to the first class of the training session you don't have to worry so just on a brief note i was explaining so these are these comes under primitive data types and this will comes under non primitive data types okay and to create a to declare a variable you have to use data type and the variable name so this is the syntax of declaring a variable you have to use a data type so here you have to use a data type and here this one is a variable name whenever you are declaring a variable so you have two things when it comes to variable declaring a variable and initializing a variable so for declaring a variable you have to use the syntax as you have to give data type and then variable name so this is the syntax that you have to follow so data types we have seen two types of data types one is primitive and the other one is non primitive for example if you want to store a boolean value so boolean is also a data type correct so if you see here boolean is also a data type so that means instead of data type i can give anything from this 
either i can give boolean i can give character by anything i can use if i want to store some integer values then i can give int so int is the data type and variable name should be anything okay you can give a so that means i have declared a variable so this is how you are going to declare a variable first you have to give some data type and you have to give the variable this could be anything you can give any names here for variable names okay so whenever you are giving int that means you are storing a integer value in this variable so this variable is used to store the value of this particular data type based on this data type we are going to store the values so to initialize a variable what you are going to give is variable name and then equal to value so what is the variable name i have used here what is the variable name here right so int is data type a is variable name so value i have to give based on the integer data type for example if you see data type size so if you see here for int data type it will store the values from minus some very big value to plus this much big value okay between this range it can store the values can i give 10 to integer values because it ranges between this only right 10 is between this okay. this one and this one. so if i am giving let's say to declare a variable what i have to do i have to give some data type and i have to use some variable name so if i want to declare some variable here in this program so what i was trying to do is int data type so i have to give some variable name for declaring a value variable so it can be abc also it can be i also anything i can give okay so to initialize the value variable what i have to do is i have to give the variable name which is i equal to so the value should be between this range only Do not exceed beyond this range. Okay, so I have I can give. Sh shall I give hundred? Because the hundred will be inside this range only. Correct? Okay, I can give hundred also. So I am giving i equals to hundred. See, I am not getting any error because this integer value will store this hundred because that is the range for this int data type. For example, if I am giving byte. let's say data type i was changing it to byte value now what i was trying to do is byte i have given i only so now what is the range of byte data type is minus 128 to plus 127 can i give 130 i can't give so if i am giving what it will happen is it will throw me some error it was giving some error because this byte will ranges from yeah any questions Yeah. Any questions? Okay. So you have to provide the range between this value to this value only. Okay. So this this is the range, and this is the data type. If you are using boolean. then you can store either true or false only okay so if you want to initialize this is the initialization and this is the declaration so this one you are calling it as declaration this one you are calling it as initialization declaration is nothing but you are giving a data type and a variable name initialization is nothing but you are giving the variable name here you are picking the variable name here and you are providing some value to it based on this data type okay and you can do it in same line also for example right i'm giving j so i have used already i right i can give j now 
equal to 100. So this is known as declaration. It looks like same, right? By some variable name, by some variable name. So this is declaration. And this part, if you can see, it was looking like initialization. I can do it in same line. Also, I can do it in different lines also. This is known as declaration. And this is known as initialization. I can do it in same line also or single line. So this is declaration and this part is known as initialization. So both can be done in same line or if you want to use it in different lines also, you can use like this. Any questions? Okay. And last thing that we are going to see as part of this one is types of variables. Okay, so we have seen this one like declaring and initialization. So you can see it in the same line as well. So here I have given data type and the variable name equals to some value. So which means I have given declaration and also the initialization in the same line. Okay. And now we are going to see types of variables in Java. So we have three types of variables in Java. The first one is local variable and then we have instance variable static variables. So there are three types, local, instance, and static. Okay. So I'll tell you what is the difference between local, instance, and static variable, how to declare an instance variable, where to declare it also. So for example, if you see this, when it comes to local variable, a variable which is declared inside the body of the method. So inside the body of the method, they are telling you. So this is the body, right, of this method. So this is the main method and this is the body. So this is the entry and this is the exit. So this is known as body of the method. This is known as body of the class, starting it from here until here. So this is the body of the class. So this is the body of the method. If you are declaring a variable inside the body of the method, then that variable is known as local variable. So here, so I have declared and initialized this J variable. J is the variable name. So I have declared inside or outside the body, inside. body of the method. So inside the body of the method. So this variable is known as local variable. Declared and initialized inside the body of the method. When you are declaring or initializing inside the body of the method, so then that particular variable is known as local variable. So it has been declared inside this body of the method. When you are declaring a variable outside the body of the method, so this is outside only, right? It was not inside now. So I am declaring outside the body, but it has to be inside the class. So if I am declaring a variable like this, in I equal to 100 or else 200, something like this. So this one is inside the method body or outside the method body? Outside the method body, but inside the class. So it is inside the class because this is a starting point and this is the ending point. So this variable is declared inside the class, but outside the method. So when you are declaring a variable inside the class and outside the method, then that particular variable, now I variable is known as instance variable okay when you are declaring inside method it is known as local variable so this is local variable j is known as local variable i is known as instance variable if you see the definitions also here instance variables will be declared inside the class it is inside the class only outside the body of the method it is outside the body of the method. So then that particular variable is known as instance variable. If you are giving static keyword for the instance variables, let's say I am creating one more instance variable, which is boolean. So boolean is a data type. So let's say boolean d equal to true. Either I can use true or false, correct? For this boolean data type. Now this is which type of variable? Local or instance? Very good. Why it is instance? 
inside of the class and outside the method so it is a instance variable d is instance variable and i is instance variable j is local variable but if you are giving static keyword for instance variables then this variable now becomes static variable okay if you are giving static keyword for instance variables previously it was instance variable because we have declared inside the class outside the method okay so that time this d variable is known as instance variables but if you are giving static keyword for instance variables so then this d variable will become static variable okay but you can't give static keyword for local variables so if you see here a local variable cannot be defined as static keyword only if you are giving static keyword for instance variables then it will become static variable okay clear any questions did you understood how to declare where to declare and all so and the types of variables any questions guys if you have any sort of questions on this demo you can let me know any questions so if you doesn't have anything i'll close this session for today so thanks everyone once again for joining this demo okay yeah yeah thank you sukesh and thank you bargo thank you guys thank you everyone have a nice rest of your day wish yeah. you the same sukesh. thanks thanks for joining guys thank you, thank you.